Now, Australia's biggest mining companies have warned Labor that their emissions reduction targets need to be realistic to keep the economy afloat. Not only are our mining resources a crucial part of the economy, I mean, they're one of the only things we do that gets us productivity, but in a time of rising inflation, the elite woke folk continue to forget the regional communities that keep our lights on, regional or urban. Let's go to Shadow Resources Minister Susan McDonald for the latest on this. Susan, mining bosses have warned that they won't be able to electrify mines by the 2030 goal. Has the government just set an unwinnable, unachievable target here? Well, James, uh, Labor's back and so is the carbon tax. This is an outrageous tax, not only on uh, the resources industries, the sector that, as Paul Keating described it, brought home the bacon for Australia. It'll deliver a 20 to $30 billion surplus at this next budget. Uh, but they are destroying jobs. They are destroying Australian jobs and uh, Australian prosperity in the future. So I think this is, it is a, a shocking tax on the prosperity of this nation and it's just another sneaky tax not disclosed to the Australian people seven months ago, uh, not discussed about what their future plans were, uh, just part of their socialist agenda. And all of this has to do, of course, with that safeguard mechanism, uh, which deals with uh, the country's biggest emitters. Where is the coalition uh, going to move on this? I mean, the, I think the government's proposed some changes to that. Will the coalition oppose that? Well, the coalition introduced a safeguards mechanism which allowed companies to reduce emissions using technology, not taxes. And that was been a very successful policy. We reduced emissions uh, as fast, if, if not faster, than most other economies in the world. But at the same time, and this is the important part, maintaining productivity and, and profitability for these businesses that employ Australians, that pour billions of dollars into Australian businesses and ensure that Australia receives the taxes that mean that we have the first world lifestyle we have in education, in health, in roads, in all sorts of other uh, government policies. So the coalition uh, had a plan. Uh, it was working well, but once again, Labor is rushing policy. They're sneaking through legislation and policy that they didn't take to the Australian people at the election. And we know that this is a carbon tax that is three times the rate that Julia Gillard proposed. Uh, it's going to result in a shortage of ACUs, particularly in regional Australia, which means that regional Australian jobs, regional Australian businesses will have no choice but to pay, we estimate, around $26 billion in carbon taxes, uh, which will affect their ability to be profitable, to continue employing Australians. Double the Australian salary uh, is what Australians receive in mining and resource companies. This is devastating, James, and it is wrong. It will damage not just Australia right now, but into the future. And it certainly, it certainly won't bring down the price of electricity or the cost of living, which is what Australians really want the government to talk about. Right. Now, the Treasury, speaking of the cost of living, is asking for more investor cash to be directed to green energy projects. Now, surely this can't be good news for Australians who are going to see their savings diverted into various things to please the Labor Party, is it? Well, this is, this is uh, you know, the, the Chinese Communist government has talked about uh, new capitalism in the same way. Uh, I was surprised that Jim Chalmers didn't do a bit more Googling to come up with some different language, <laughs> to, different to what uh, the Chinese are using. But uh, these are policies that go against the very success of this nation. We are a resources and export nation. What's next? Uh, taxing uh, resource companies today, will they be taxing agricultural tomorrow? But the idea that government knows best about where to invest uh, taxpayers' dollars uh, is terrifying. Uh, we have people running the Treasury, uh, like Jim Chalmers, who's never held a job in the real world. Uh, they have relied for many years on that salary that comes in every month thanks to the government coffers, uh, and it doesn't mean that they're they're the, in the best uh, situation to decide where dollars, investment dollars go. So we've seen their kind of policies trialled. We've seen them trialled in other failed states. Uh, Argentina tried the gas and 
uh, the gas price caps mm. uh, and they smashed that industry. They tried a cap on beef prices. They smashed investment in that industry. We should be focusing on what allows the, the uh, cost of living to fall and it's not increasing the cost of gas, uh, which is runs through into fertilisers, into the cost of food. Um, but, you know, I, I, we've got a long list now of policies that were not disclosed to the Australians before the last election, what? which are not driving prosperity and future uh, jobs for this country. Labor is supposed to be a party for Australian workers and they are demonstrating that they're not. Susan, uh, speaking of gas, I'm glad you mentioned that because apparently spot prices on the gas markets hit new highs in four different states today, uh, yet we seem to have governments federally and certainly in Victoria where there's you know a lot of gas under the ground which they can't get to, uh, and we may also have a Labor government in New South Wales uh, in you know eight weeks or so. What is going to happen to the consumers who are going to see $500 a year at least increases in their gas bills when we've got all of this gas right under the ground? That's exactly right. And we warned Labor about this when they rushed legislation into the House last December. We warned them that the only way to genuinely reduce gas prices, particularly over the long term, was to bring more supply to market. We've seen those projects that were poised to bring more gas to the Australian domestic market have to pull back. The uncertainty created by the mandatory code of conduct, uh, by the gas price caps, has meant that <coughs> contracts have not been able to be signed. We warned about the process. We warned that they weren't including the retailers. We warned that this was a not good policy, but the sneaky Albanese government went ahead without any consultation and has laid possibly the worst policy decision in the last 20 years. It's been described as the worst policy uh, in the world in the last 20 years. It's a, 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 a competition you don't want to win, James, but Australia's winning it on introducing socialist policies that will see Australian jobs threatened, Australian prosperity threatened, Australian taxes threatened. And so we know when the lights go out, uh, when gas prices and electricity prices go up and when regional Australians lose jobs, they know who to thank and they can thank this Albanese government. Indeed. Susan McDonald, Shadow Resources Minister, thank you so much for joining us on Inside the News. Now,